Small American towns have a certain charm and authenticity that is really appealing. There are things that people can experience in small towns that they don't have access to in more urban areas. While development can offer more options in some respects, it can also have a negative impact on the things that these smaller communities really value. It is a constant challenge for small towns like ours to maintain the way of life that we value. So I row, I was a rower in college, and all these years later, you know, 40 years or something later, I'm still rowing. And when the weather's nice, I'll row maybe three times a week to row when the sun's coming up in Chestertown, or when the big ships come in, and then I row by the big ships and say good morning to the crew that are out watching the sunrise and drinking their coffee. So it's a blast being a small business owner in Chestertown. Um, so far, this is my fifth month, but I love the customers. But not just the customers, you know, the local business people are so supportive every day. They tell me to hang in there, and that's really fun. But then on top of that, I get to be across from Washington College. And so I get to know the students in a very personal way, and, and you know, academically, how your class is going. You know, whether it's, you know, they can tell me about their relationships or their future plans. That part is a blast, being in Chestertown. So the reason I wanted to start a smoothie bar, it's uh, twofold. My PhD is in human growth and development with um, my area of emphasis was integrated healthcare. And I've become, through my academic research, very aware of the poor choices that are available in a small community, a rural community. Um, and I was tired of it as a mom. My name is Bridget Bunton, and I've lived here for almost five years. I moved here in 1991. I've lived in this area all my life. I think one of the things that impacted me the greatest was the small town nature. Seeing people that you know on a daily basis. Where people are accepting, people um, are honest, people are down to earth and real. Um, feeling as though you're a person, right, instead of just one member of a huge mass. At that point in time, my son was 10 years old. I told him that he was welcome to do anything he wanted to, but I would hear about it in about 10 minutes. So my name is Chris Serino, and I'm the mayor of Chestertown. I've lived in Chestertown since about the year 2000, and I've lived in the county, so I've lived in the area since 1992, so 23, 24 years now. For me, the, the quality of life is, is awesome over here. We put the river and the environment and the hospital and a college and a thriving arts community together. Uh, it's, a, it's a way of life that's really attractive for a lot of people in a lot of different demographics. I am Michael Harvey. I'm an associate professor of business management in the Department of Business Management here at Washington College. So the question of quality of life and, and how you would characterize the quality of life in a Chestertown and in Kent County, it's a really interesting question. And uh, by some measures, we have a very high quality of life here. I think people can live close to nature here. Um, uh, there may be more cows in Kent County than people. Uh, there's water all around, there's a lot of green space. Those things are really important and I think a lot of people kind of forget how important being connected to nature is in our lives. So I think that, that's, a, that's a huge part of quality of life in Chestertown. Uh, it's a rural community and that brings with, with it its own distinct kind of quality of life. People know each other, people have known each other going back generations and families. I served on a school board with a farmer who's been here, his family has been here. Uh, oh, for a very long time. Many generations have farmed the same land. That's really, really cool. That's not something you get a lot in the U.S. To come to a community where families have been here for generations, that's, that's fantastic. And that's an aspect of quality of life. There's a connection between the people and the land. I think that that's really meaningful to me, and I think meaningful to those of us who end up settling in Kent County. I have an 18-year-old son who's a freshman in college who grew up here in Chestertown, and I have a 12-year-old who's in middle school. This isn't the world. This is one small piece of the world. It's not any better or any worse than any other piece. A challenge in retaining our youth, I think it's several fold. I think part of it is when you grow up in a little small town like this and you get to be like 
college age, I think it's natural for a lot of our local kids to want to go see somewhere else because they maybe lived in the same 10 square mile area for their whole lives. And so, it, hey, what is it like to live in a city? So I think part of it's natural. Young people go where there's economic opportunity. That's a very old phenomenon. Uh, after graduation, I'm planning to go to graduate school in California to do winemaking. This is not a new phenomenon for rural areas. It's, it's part of what makes rural areas so difficult to maintain. And if you look across the whole US, rural county after rural county is losing population. On a big picture level, Kent County is in a long-term decline in terms of its population. It's not a dramatic decline, the numbers are small, but it's declining, not increasing. I'm most likely going to move somewhere else. There's a couple internships that I'm looking at. There's one specifically that looks promising in Virginia right now. I think as a community, we need to do all we can to provide opportunities for young people. After I graduate, I was planning on going somewhere else just for graduate school, but I was also planning on going to another small town. But I still, I still love it here, like I'm a small town girl. Well, my name's Terry Bostick, and um, I grew up about four miles from Chestertown on a farm with uh, four siblings and um, I went to Chestertown Elementary School and Chestertown High School. Chestertown was my home, you know, that's where we came to do shopping and um, there was no mall or shopping center then. There was just downtown Chestertown. What, what made me come back is that I wanted to go back into teaching. I had been out of teaching for about 12 years, but I was hired back at Kent County High School by people who knew me. Some people who leave come back, not, not many, but some do. I think that, that uh, people who leave don't dislike the area. It's just that uh, they are in a profession, they've chosen a profession that we don't have here. I think we need to forthrightly face the fact that we need more economic opportunities for the people living here. Uh, jobs are the foundation of community. The quality of life starts with earning a living. And you earn a living, then you can start to do all the great things with that living. Um, so, so we need more jobs in Kent County. If the population um, isn't growing and prospering, then uh, there's going to be less opportunities for, for jobs. And you know, We do have some big employers. The college is a big employer. The hospital is a big employer. The school system is a big employer. But they're very uh, focused employment opportunities. And if you don't fit into one of those n niches, then it can be difficult to find a job that you're happy with and that pays a decent salary. And so I think bringing in, you know, more jobs is always going to be a challenge for the people running the community and the county as well. I don't necessarily want, you know, big box stores to kind of pop up right down 213, um, but it would be helpful if, if they were a little bit closer. The development also helps to increase jobs. The larger businesses offer a convenience for us, maybe, um, Maybe they're selling gas, like Royal Farms. I know that's right over the bridge, but still Chestertown address. Um, maybe they have a lot longer hours. Um, I can tell you that Reed is up the street has a lot longer hours than I'm able to provide. So I think that they provide a convenience for us, for sure. But if we're not careful, we could also be overrun by larger businesses because I do think they have a, a huge advantage over us. Um, I think they have marketing people, I think they have uh, cash flow maybe up front that we don't have to create space to hire staff. And so I think if Chestertown is going to remain unique and not look like a lot of other places in the world, I think we need to maintain a small business presence. It's a fine line. You don't want to just put your hand out and say no development but you want to be careful about the kind of development that you do have and that you that you bring in to stimulate the town rather than you know something that might be detrimental to the community. There was a proposal for a huge Walmart in Chestertown. I can't remember what the square footage was. It was a really big store. It was illegal by our zoning code and people fought it and it was a battle that was waged for a couple of decades and eventually Walmart uh, never opened shop there, obviously. One does wonder if there would be more businesses along Route 213, a larger tax paying base, um, and more jobs in King County if there had been a Walmart here. So how do you allow development to continue to come in while preserving the unique character of where you are? I think that's the biggest challenge for any small town, and for me, it comes back to good planning. 
Uh, I'm Alex Castro. I uh, live in Chestertown. I've lived here for the last six years. My wife and I moved up here from Baltimore. We came up 213, crossed the bridge, halfway across the bridge, Kelly turned to me and said, Alex, we're moving here. And I said, how the hell can we move here? It's a two and a, I thought at that point, a two and a half hour commute. She said, you're just going to do it. It's just too beautiful not to do it. But no, Chestertown isn't, you know, picture perfect. Well, it's picture perfect because it's beautiful. But it, it has its problems, of course. And there, that is, obviously, we don't have enough jobs here. We're not promoting jobs sufficiently. Um, and one of the things that crept in after 2008 was a sense of negativity, which, of course, I couldn't compare to years before because we just got here at that time. And everybody was saying how the town needed more and more retail. And retail was going down everywhere. It wasn't just in Chestertown, but everybody wanted to blame it on retail and, and a local problem. Uh, but since then, What's come to the fore is that there are things which could be considered magnets to bring people to Chestertown. And one of those strongest magnets uh, are the arts. And Chestertown is very, very strong in the arts. Hi, I'm Carla Massoni. So nice to have you all with us tonight. I've lived in Chestertown for over 30 years. I've had the gallery here for the last 25. I've been pleased to work in the arts and in this community of wonderful artists for all of those years. And um, I'm also very involved in work that we're trying to do to have Chestertown declared an arts and entertainment district. Well, first Fridays, actually, um, Greg Waddell and I decided that it would be a good idea to create something that people would be able to enjoy their downtown and we really wanted it pitched towards the local community. An opportunity for us to come out together to engage and enjoy our town, if you will. So we got together artists in the community, art galleries, but also the antique stores, and we asked that they stay open. And it just took off immediately because it was an opportunity for the citizens of Chestertown to claim their town, to celebrate it, to wander through it, and you know, just sort of engage with one another. It's a big town-wide cocktail party. Sandbox has really helped with that, and uh, we're grateful to Alex Castro and Sean Mead for everything they've done. I mean, this is becoming a cultural hub, and I think that's one of the things that's going to really bring Chestertown to the fore much more quickly than people realize. Let your life in is a nerve, small entrepreneurs are now using the internet as a secondary method of marketing. So it's changing and we need to evolve as well. I think that we just have to work a little bit harder as small business people to stay on the cutting edge of what's happening uh, with marketing across the country and across the world. And it's about social media right now and we have to stay savvy either through young people that we're hiring or through going to conferences or following some of the larger organizations. You know, one of the things I do every morning at 6 o'clock, I spend from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. studying social media. I think there has to be a top-down but also grassroots commitment to creating opportunities for jobs. I think the college can play a role in that. I think our development of the waterfront is really exciting. I think if you step back and ask, what kinds of things is Kent County well endowed with? What are, what are, what are its factor endowments that matter? We've got this awesome river culture and coast culture, all these estuaries that weave in and out of the edges of Kent County along, along the bay. But we have a good number of marinas. Are we doing all we can to support them? Farming is really interesting. You know, one of the really exciting things that's happening in America these days is a new interest in locally grown produce, produce that we can be sure how it was raised, whether or not it's technically organic, that we have high confidence that it's high quality produce. And I think a place like Kent County is a perfect location for that. But we're close enough to major metropolitan areas, specifically Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, that restaurants there could come to rely on us as one of their key producers of all kinds of produce. And that's actually already happening in Kent County. It's a false dichotomy to pit growth against people. How do you as a small town make sure that you are positioned to survive the 21st century, allow development to come in while not compromising the great things that you already have? And it's a very tricky question. And, uh, there's no easy answers, but as I said earlier, 
For me, it all comes down to having a, a very well-defined plan that's spelled out in the, your town's comp plan that's supported by your zoning. And hopefully you have good people on your planning commission and your town council and in, uh, in the mayor's position to make it all stick. And uh, you know, if everyone works together, development can be a great thing that can, that can help position you for success in the future. But if you just get run over by the developers, it can really change the character of your town in a hurry, and that's not always a great thing. What I'd like to see in Kent County is um, some small manufacturing and small service businesses. We have an incredible historic community that is a living, breathing one. We're not, you know, we're not some theme park. The history is all around us, and it is all around us in terms of everything that America is about. As far as what needs to be improved, I think, you know, just to continue the mentorship that we have. I think don't let people, small businesses, get lost in the shuffle. Don't come and see what's wrong when you see that they're going out of business. Because I think at that point, it's beyond too late. I think people have to be constantly checking with small businesses. And, and I think that's happening more and more right now, but we can't let people flounder and then just close their doors. It does us no good as a community. Communities constantly confront change. A certain amount of development-based growth will be required to retain Chestertown youth and continue to allow our community to grow. However, maintaining Chestertown's livelihood requires much more. Preserving the values that we stand for is a challenge. We want to have strong connections with our neighbors and enjoy and support the locally owned businesses in town. Our connection to nature and this place is an important part of who we are. These things are important to keeping the small town charm. It is a matter of striking a balance between moving forward and preserving our way of life that will continue to cultivate a thriving community in the generations to come. There are certain ones that we have practiced very little. <laughs> okay.